Hi, good morning. This is Joanna Nelson, and I am with the New Mexico Economic Development Department. And thanks so much for joining us today for our webinar series. Uh, we do, um, there's a little bit of feedback, I think, that's coming from maybe if you guys put your phone on mute. Hopefully, that'll solve it. Um, but we do these webinars monthly, and we do them on the last Thursday of the month, and we cover topics that relate to economic development, community development, financing infrastructure, and basic topics around how do you pay for um, projects in your community. So we are really thrilled to have um, members of the Main Street team here today, and they're going to be talking about more about information about their program, how you can get involved with them, and also how to apply what they are doing in their models to your communities, um, how to work with them if you have a Main Street community. They are a fantastic resource, fantastic program, so we're really thrilled to, to learn more about them. Um, a little bit of housekeeping, we have, um, we will send this presentation out to everybody that registered. We'll send it out in a PDF, and this is being recorded, so we'll put this on our YouTube channel, and you can access it anytime that you want. So I did want to give a little bit of background about the finance development team at the Economic Development Department before we get started. Just know that this resource is out there. This is a group of folks at the department located in Santa Fe, but work statewide that can help your community, can help your project, um, find financing, brainstorm about financing, um, figure out different opportunities to fund projects. So um, we manage a couple of programs and you can see those there. We're not going to go into detail about them, but you can go to that YouTube channel and, and follow up and learn more about these or reach out. Um, Local Economic Development Act, that's the LIDA fund, fund it, business finance finder, new markets tax credits, um, New Mexico Collateral Assistance Program, Rural Efficient Business Program, and Opportunity Zones. So I did see a hand up, and I, I didn't mention um, during the webinar, feel free to ask any questions. This is an interactive platform. So as Lucas and Amy are going, um, ask any questions, and we'll take those questions at the end. So. Um, without any more delay, I want to turn it over to Lucas Pedraza and Amy Barnhart with Main Street. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Um, we're happy to be talking with you all today, and uh, we hope you guys find this session really useful, and um, really hope you guys uh, reach out to us, and if you have any questions after this as well, um, we really look forward to working with you guys. Um, so I'm just going to start off uh, and introduce us and, and then uh, give you a little overview here. Okay. Um, again, my name is Lucas Pedraza. I'm the new uh, New Mexico Main Street Project Coordinator, and this is... Amy Barnhart. I am a revitalization specialist with the New Mexico Main Street Program, and I'm focused on preservation and nonprofit resource development. Okay. And... Um, so first we want to take you a little bit through the kind of approach that we take to economic development, um, is, which is an asset-based kind of economic development approach. Uh, and then we're going to go into how this came from the National Main Street approach and how we work with them a little bit. And then uh, we'll go into different sort of examples that in the different communities that we have here in, in New Mexico throughout the state and explain how uh, the organizations apply to be Main Streets and how we work with them and how we also want to work with you and sort of uh, encourage more collaboration between you guys and your local main streets. So I'm going to give you guys a brief overview of asset-based economic development. So to, to begin, we're going to kind of contrast it to something you guys are familiar with in terms of 
economic-based economic development or e-based economic development. Uh, typically, e-based economic development focuses on uh, companies or businesses that typically export most of its goods and services or generates revenue um, mostly from out of state. Um, and usually this kind of uh, strategy places an emphasis on recruiting uh, these kinds of companies from uh, other places or expanding the ones that are here already within the state. Um, and this is typically done by leveraging public resources, providing for tax abatements, job training funds, and other kinds of infrastructure and, and uh, incentives and other kinds of incentives. Uh, in contrast, our approach is focused more on uh, what they call a bottom-up, community-driven uh, kind of economic development projects. Um, well, we will work with different kinds of companies that are not necessarily exporting everything uh, that they sell or, m or most of what they sell. Um, they can be generating their funds mostly within their own economy as a local community. Um, it's focused on sort of creating a stronger local economy um, and, and, and building up those resources or assets locally. And usually we use different kinds of assets to kind of leverage uh, uh, the kind of work that we do in the community. Uh, so they can be, I'll go into that a little bit later, but it can be from for parks to uh, infrastructure to a library or uh, other facilities or buildings, historic buildings that are within a community um, or to even the culture and the history itself, um, which we use to try to strengthen the local economy and, and raise income and bring in more revenue to the local community and commercial district. Um, and by doing this, we hope to not only strengthen the local community, but also work within a regional economy to expand the kind of business and entrepreneurism, entrepreneurism that's going on in the community. Um, and a lot of this is done when not only working with the communities to build their capacity, to take on, um, you know, uh, public infrastructure projects and um, those kinds of things, but also, um, um, also, uh, working with not only the local communities, local organizations, but also the local governments to be able to take in uh, different kinds of funds, like leader funds, and maybe even build up their policies and understand how to use MRA districts, metropolitan redevelopment areas, and capital outlay funds is a lot of what we do. So here's just um, a quick example of what a Main Street program or an asset-based economic development community program might be focused on. You might develop a map of all of your local assets that might look a little bit different from um, some more e-based economic development efforts. So we would be tracking all the various different civic organizations and associations in the community. We'd be looking at um, all the different elements of our local economy and all the different arts and cultural assets. We'd be looking at the businesses within our commercial corridor that we're focused on. We'd be looking at physical assets, which could be a park. It could be a historic building. Um, it could be some public art, maybe the train depot. Um, so we would start looking at all these various assets in the community and exploring how we can leverage them um, and, and more focus on what the local existing assets are and how we can leverage them as opposed to bringing in something from the outside. Okay. And for us, we see this kind of work, uh, the asset-based approach working alongside e-based approach. Uh, we, we believe that uh, the kind of work that we do helps set the stage for actually recruiting larger companies and, and our state businesses or helping them uh, encourage more growth between the e-based kind of companies we already have here. Um, by creating these commercial districts, and a stronger local economy that makes it more attractive for other companies to want to stay here or want to move here. And we see that really both of these approaches are necessary to uh, bring about the kinds of jobs that we want to see in our community and the kind of um, economic uh, development that we want to see for the whole state. Um, so uh, in terms of right now, we have about 30 communities that are main streets. Um, in the last seven years, um, we've had a lot of success 
uh, we've done a lot of our own sort of uh, creating new businesses and 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 uh, helping businesses to expand. Uh, we've had 983 of those within the last uh, seven years. Um, there's a lot of rehabilitation work going on in these districts. Um, this is a revitalization program, and a big part of that is revitalizing these old buildings and readapting them. Um, so we've had about 1,500 of those happen. Um, we've brought in 178 million to these uh, areas that we are working in. Um, created over 4,000 jobs in in our communities and have had almost 250,000 hours of volunteers volunteer hours in the communities. Um, we estimated that equals to about almost five million or over five million dollars in terms of volunteer time. Uh, a lot of the boards that we have in, in these local communities are people from lawyers to uh, contractors to all kinds of skills and trade who are giving their time to do things like help, um, you know, improve the facade of a building or help create um, and, and get attention from local legislators and, and create campaigns that help get capital outlay money. So there's a lot of expertise that goes into um, these local programs, and they're usually people who are living in the community and who want to see their community do better. Um, and also, these local organizations are very successful in getting their own private grants um, from foundations and other sources, uh, and, and they raise about they've raised over two, 3.2 million in the last seven years. And these are this is all money going to strengthening the local economy and circulating circulating around in the local economy. So now that we've hit you with a few numbers related to the Main Street program, we're going to take a little bit of a deeper dive into how we reach those numbers. So the Main Street America movement began in 1977 when the National Trust for Historic Preservation launched the Main Street Project. And essentially, they established three pilot projects in three communities in the Midwest, and they wanted to explore the reason that so many downtowns were dying. And so through this process, they were able to identify what was affecting the downtown's health and then develop a comprehensive strategy to address that. And, um, you know, prior to this, the focus had really been on just saving buildings. And what the National Trust realized was you can't just keep saving historic buildings and sticking a museum in there. We really need to make these buildings viable and give them a new life and continue to grow the economy in what was traditionally the center of commerce in each community. So in 1980, the National Main Street Center was launched, and today that program is leading a movement committed to strengthening communities through preservation-based economic development in older and historic downtowns and neighborhood commercial districts. Kind of a slow screen here. I'm not sure what's happening, but the screen it's not is changing. not moving. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Uh, here we go. Um, I'm actually going to jump one screen ahead here. Um, so New Mexico Main Street was established in 1985. It is housed in the Economic Development Department, and it is the authorized state coordinating Main Street program through the National Main Street Center. So to become a Main Street program, you have to work through New Mexico Main Street. Our program helps our affiliated organizations create economically viable business environments while preserving our local, local cultural and historic resources. We do use a community-driven asset-based approach, which is the Main Street approach. You can see on the map here that we have 30 active Main Street programs throughout the state, 12 arts and cultural districts, which is a program that um, the Main Street State Director administers alongside New Mexico Arts and the Historic Preservation Division. We have 28 frontier and Native American community initiative projects, both active and complete, all around the state, and we'll tell you a little bit more about that program later. And then we've also completed eight historic theater restorations, which was a part of our historic theater initiative program. To accomplish this work, New Mexico Main Street has three statewide economic transformation strategies that we use to guide the work that we do in our communities. 
The first one is focused on building capacity for local economic revitalization and redevelopment. So we're really focused on helping the local leaders in our communities build up their own capacity so that they are able to tackle these small and large projects that help them revitalize their downtowns. We're also focused on enhancing the entrepreneurial and creative economy. So we're trying to build off those existing assets, arts, culture, advanced technology, and creative assets that already exist uh, to support additional entrepreneurial and creative endeavors. We are also focused on creating thriving places. So we are wanting to increase the economic viability through revitalization and creative placemaking activities to physically transform our downtowns, courthouse squares, plazas, villages, to help them reach their full potential by having great public spaces, buildings, streets, and pedestrian areas. So we accomplished this through the Main Street Four Point approach. When the National Main Street Center uh, conducted their pilot program, they determined that there was four main areas of work that you really have to focus in to be successful. And the first one being the organization point, which is focused on building a strong nonprofit organization that can sustain the revitalization effort and spearhead it. Um, and this would also include cultivating partnerships with other nonprofits or community development organizations with the municipality, engaging and recruiting volunteers from the community, and fundraising for both projects and operations. Now, I did say focused on building a strong nonprofit organization, but I should mention that there are some Main Street programs that are housed in municipal governments. That is not a model that we typically um, implement here in New Mexico, but there are some other states, Texas, for example, in which every Main Street program is housed in their municipality. Uh, the second point is design, which is focused on physically transforming the community and enhancing the physical and visual assets that set that commercial district apart. Economic vitality is focused on uh, developing capital, creating incentives, and other economic and financial tools to help assist new and existing businesses, catalyze property redevelopment, and create a supportive environment for entrepreneurs and innovators that drive local economies. And the fourth point is promotion, which positions the downtown or commercial district as the center of community and hub of economic, excuse me, economic activity, while creating a positive image that showcases the community's unique characteristics. So this is the point that is focused on marketing the district. It's focused on maybe developing community events that would bring people into the district as well. So uh, additionally, the National Main Street Center established eight guiding principles, which we just want to touch on really quick here. And again, the first one is asset-based. As we mentioned earlier, Main Street is largely the number one uh, community-driven asset-based economic development program. So we're looking at identifying whatever assets are in each unique Main Street district that can serve as a springboard for new products, services, businesses, and activities in the district. Additionally, the Main Street program needs to be comprehensive. There are many factors that have affected the district's health over the decades, and they are all tightly interrelated. So we need to make sure our approach is comprehensive and that we're addressing all of them. Incremental in that a successful sustained revitalization begins with a series of small actions that lead to catalytic change. So to get to that big um, redevelopment project of a six-story building, we first maybe need to start with putting planners on the street as small as that might seem, there are these very small incremental steps that build confidence in the district and get people excited about engaging in the work that you're doing. We're also implementation focused, so we're focusing on transforming the economy of the older commercial district over time because it took time for it to decline in the first place. Um, so we have to break these transformations down into small achievable activities along the way. We're also focused on quality. So I'm sure that many of us have been in communities or seen it in our own community in which projects are rushed through without the proper planning going into them on the front end. And so we end up with a poor quality product either in design or um, materials that are used. And because we skimped on the quality, we are now kind of stuck with something that is less effective. We also have to change attitudes because 
uh, there might be people in your community that have never seen your downtown or your historic commercial district as a functioning, vibrant place. So it takes time to shift those attitudes and change the way people feel about that district. Partnerships is a huge one. Um, it can't be done with just the private sector. It can't be done with just the public sector. We need both sectors to work together. We also need to explore how we can bring in other partners in that process as well. And finally, it should be self-directed. Uh, nobody from outside your community can come in and tell you how best to improve it or change it. It needs to come from within the community. That should be the driving force of the Main Street program. And I, I just wanted to add in there that a lot of the work that we do as state employees and with our contractors and service specialists is help the communities in, in engaging in all this work. So with a partnership, a public-private partnership, we have people on board who could come in and actually help guide a community through the process of creating an agreement and working with the MRA department uh, and their city or local municipality to get a, a, a real estate development project done. And so we help, we're there every step of the way with the community and we're also there to, to help work between uh, the community and their local partners. As I mentioned earlier, we do have an arts and cultural district program, which is focused on enhancing the creative or cultural economy. Um, and then we have the Frontier Native American Communities Initiative, which is focused on communities of populations under 7,500. And the focus of this program is essentially a mini Main Street program where we will come in and focus on one single catalytic economic development project, usually over a period of 12 to 18 months. And we established this program because what we found is that many communities, particularly with smaller populations, do not have the capacity to support a full Main Street program. Um, and we look at this program as a way to either come in and have an impact on a smaller program or help start the process of building the capacity in that community so that they can apply to be a Main Street community in the future. And so for many of you on this call, you may not have a Main Street in your district, in your commercial district. And so I think we would encourage you to explore that with us. Um, and if you have questions about that, we can answer that at the end of this call or contact us. So now we're going to touch a little bit on how you would work with New Mexico Main Street to make an impact in your community. As Lucas mentioned earlier, you know, this is a public-private partnership. And we see that as being our program, the state government, working with your local government, and then the local Main Street program as well. So there is an expectation from the local government partner that you will philosophically commit to supporting this program. So you will demonstrate that downtown or commercial district revitalization is a priority to you. And one of the ways you do that is by uh, committing to a memorandum of understanding with New Mexico Main Street and the local Main Street program. Additionally, you commit to um, developing a service contract with that program, which means that you are entering into a financial contract with them that helps get that program off the ground and enables them to then go out and seek additional resources, um, both for operations and for the project. And if you're... Um, if you have a Main Street program and New Mexico Main Street has capital outlay grants to award, then the local government partner would serve as the fiscal agency for that money. So there would be that collaboration as well. We at New Mexico Main Street uh, provide a variety of resources. That is our sole purpose for existence is to get resources into our communities. And among those are technical assistance, which we'll talk a little bit more about in some later slides, capital outlay money, as I just mentioned. Um, we help coordinate all the various programs and projects, and we collect uh, reinvestment statistics from each community, which we then report back to the National Main Street Center. And then we also ensure that each of our programs is complying with expectations of the state and federal government as well. And then on the, on, as far as the local revitalization partner, which is the Main Street program, they, they are tasked with implementing the projects, developing their own resources in addition to their municipal contract, um, planning, both developing maybe a long-range plan as well as an annual work plan, mm -hmm. um, reporting on those statistics, coordinating with the city and the state, and then ensuring that they are in compliance with all the expectations. 
right, a lot of the local community work is is to help bring consensus um, about what the priorities are within the district and in, in the local municipality, and bring attention and and keep a focus on what those projects are and bringing them to fruition and, and identifying the small incremental steps that lead up to the bigger projects. They help keep not only their community engaged and on the same page when it comes to what the priorities are, but it also helps bring in the local uh, electives as well as the electives on the state level um, to bring focus to what the real catalyst projects that are really that can really spark the change in the districts and bring the economic development that we all want to see happen in, in these areas. So we mentioned that we would touch a little bit on, on the process of becoming a Main Street program. So it is an application process. We typically will open up, up applications once we get past the legislative session and we have an understanding of what our program budget is. However, I will add that when we are hearing from communities around the state that are, and they are saying we want a Main Street program, that kind of helps us determine whether what sort of application process we should undergo and helps us determine how we should allocate our resources. So if you are thinking that the Main Street program sounds like something you might want to explore, I would absolutely encourage you to reach out to Lucas or the state director, Daniel Gutierrez, as well, to learn a little bit more about the program um, and let us know that you're interested. Once we accept those applications, we will come to your community and do a readiness assessment to determine whether or not you have the capacity to begin a Main Street program. Um, from there, we will select and designate those communities. Then there is a 12 to 18 month accelerator process where we, where we basically run you through a series of benchmarks to get you up to speed um, and get some of those smaller projects going and out of the way before you are then designated as either an affiliate or an accredited community. Um, affiliate, well, I guess I should say accredited is really the higher functioning Main Street organization. So that would be the goal to get to be an accredited program. Um, and I should also mention, though we don't have it on the slide, that the arts and cultural districts and the frontier community programs are also application-based and also dependent on funding to the program. So as we've mentioned, there's a variety of resources that New Mexico Main Street can bring into our communities. Um, of course, number one is capital outlay and sometimes LIDA funds, depending on the project. And again, that is dependent on how much money is allocated to the Main Street program through the legislative process. So if you are an accredited Main Street program, you have the ability to apply for capital outlay grants for projects in your community. We also try to help bring in other funds as well. Um, if you are a Main Street program and you're interested in developing a metropolitan redevelopment area, then there is a third no match grant that you can receive through the New Mexico Finance Authority. Um, so that's, that's one of the partnerships that our program has built to get more money into our communities as well. And if we are working with you on a larger project in which you're seeking outside funds, then we, then we will provide whatever support we need to in that capacity. Um, we'll also help navigate the process of historic tax credits for property owners in your districts. Um, we will help you develop business development incentives we have several partner organizations, such as the New Mexico Resiliency Alliance, um, and we've worked with the New Mexico Gas Company as well in recent years to provide grants to our Main Street programs. We pay for your local Main Street program to be a member of the National Main Street Network, which is about $450. We also pay for the registration fee for the National Conference, which is also right around $450. So those are great values. We also have an array of technical expertise that we can get into your community. We have individuals that are focused on entrepreneur and business development. We have a landscape architect who can also help you with urban planning. We have an architect that will help develop renderings and help um, troubleshoot issues with historic buildings in your district. We have a property redevelopment specialist. We have an individual that can focus in on the creative economy in your community. We provide organizational development. Um, planning, fundraising, grant writing support. We can teach you how to manage a nonprofit. We have individuals that can help you with branding and marketing and event development in your community, graphic design, historic preservation support. And then we also provide a variety of educational opportunities as well, both to the staff and volunteers of our Main Street program. And I just want to highlight some of the things in, in terms of property redevelopment we can help uh, local communities and uh, property owners understand 
what the market conditions are in their community, what is feasible and what is not feasible, uh, what would take some actual help from the public sector. Um, and we also help with um, developing the capacity of a local organization to be able to raise grants itself and, and bring in funding itself uh, to support these kinds of projects. Um, and also the branding, marketing, and promotions is another one that's been really, I think, helpful is understanding how a, ma a district or a city can market or promote itself and the businesses within, within this district and how it can fit into the local and regional economy. So we could bring a lot of different kinds of technical expertise and uh, analysis that can help bring uh, projects forward. Um, and also in terms of the professional development, they're not only for just for our members who are part of the organizations, they're also open to city and county uh, and also other organizations, chambers of commerce and economic development organizations that are out there. They're great. Uh, so we do a winter quarterly and we do a summer quarterly. We'll have some more information on this later. But they're great places to meet the people who may be in your district or in your area doing this kind of work. And they're great places to just sort of network and brainstorm some ideas for projects and talk about what the priorities are in your area and, and figure out how we can work together to uh, push forward some projects. Like Lucas mentioned, uh, we do have one particular upcoming educational opportunity um, that we want to share with all of you, which is on the next slide, if it will ever change. <laughs> uh, here we go. Um, so next month in Santa Fe, we have our New Mexico Main Street Winter Conference. And this is really going to be a fantastic conference. We have a keynote presentation and workshops from Roger Brooks, who is an internationally acclaimed urbanist, futurist, downtown innovator, and author. The overall focus of the conference is extending tools and capacity for creating world-class Main Street communities. If you are already a part of the New Mexico Main Street Network, meaning you are a frontier community or a Main Street community and you work with either of those programs, the registration fee is $35. If you're from outside the network, the registration fee for the full three days is $70, which is still a really amazing price for this world-class speaker. Um, and just a note that registration does close on February 3rd, so you have just a few days to register for that. You can just Google New Mexico Main Street Winter Conference on the event, excuse me, you could go to the Eventbrite website and just search for New Mexico Main Street Winter Conference 2020, and you should find that on there. Um, and that should have all the additional details of the conference there as well. So we um, we have till 11 o'clock, and we want to allow lots of time for questions at the end. So we're going to just quickly run through some of these projects from some of our Main Street communities that will give you an idea of some of the work that is happening and that uh, New Mexico Main Street can help you accomplish. So Great Blocks on Main Street is actually a newer program that was developed in the last few years. Um, and the focus of that is to go beyond just developing plans for how, how you might physically improve the district, but to also produce construction-ready documents as well. Um, it's very easy to just develop some really beautiful renderings of what it could look like, but we know that the additional cost of the construction documents also can sometimes delay these projects from ever actually happening because that's, you know, ends up being about $100,000. So what this does then is it focuses in on the public infrastructure and which can then help catalyze and leverage private sector reinvestment, which we then hope will result in higher economic performance. And it does focus in on a two to three block commercial area. So a Main Street district might actually be, let's say, 10 square blocks. But this is just one section of that district that we really want to put a whole bunch of resources into to really make it as effective as it can be. And you can see some pictures here. These are from the Las Vegas, New Mexico Great Blocks Project, which is down in the railroad area. They have a huge district that um, encompasses the plaza and then works its way down to the railroad district. So this is just for that small section of, of that community. Um, and so the focus is on upgrading the sewer and sewage lines, water supply lines, electric and power infrastructure, roads, pavements, sidewalks, water retention, flooding. And um, as part of this process, you know, we, we help with the funding and identifying capital outlay for it. There is an expectation that partners and stakeholders and public input will be brought into this process as well. 
And so for our first example here, this is the very first Great Blocks project that was launched in Raton, so they are the farthest along in implementation. And the partnership was between the city uh, economic development department in Main Street and the Raton Main Street and Arts and Cultural District. The city of Raton had already allocated money toward the multimodal facility, which was down along First Street, um, and they were going to be replacing water lines, street resurfacing, curb and gutter replacement as well. So then New Mexico Main Street brought money to the table to help them develop the architectural engineering planning documents for those three blocks. Additionally, New Mexico Main Street brought technical assistance as well to help when we're moving beyond that infrastructure construction where we're looking at how do we redevelop these buildings? How do we get some new businesses into these vacant properties? And here you can see some more photos from Raton. You can see uh, initial conditions up top on the left and then on the bottom right are the renderings that were developed for the project. So of course phase one was the planning and construction ready documents. Phase two was the actual construction. And then phase three, excuse me, phase three, as I mentioned, was focused on the private reinvestment, which we're kind of in, in that phase now, um, phase two and phase three, where buildings are being rehabilitated and new businesses are opening along that, those few blocks. And then we have a few more pictures here. So these were the photos prior to improvements. And as you can see, it definitely needed some enhancing. And on the next slide, you can see, I mean, it looks so beautiful now. It looks amazing. It's like a huge, huge change. Um, and as a result, they have seen a variety of things happening down in that district, and they have had multiple businesses open. Um, while we were waiting for construction to take place, we held a New Mexico Main Street statewide meeting there. And as a part of that meeting, we developed these floating crosswalks that were sort of the gateway into that district. And then on the bottom left-hand corner, you can see we also built these pallet benches and did some fun washable paint footprints and tracks all over the downtown to encourage people to walk around down there. Sometimes these smaller projects, um, uh, while they build up to the larger ones, they, they actually do a lot to support the local businesses that are there. These uh, kinds of small projects enhance the experience of people coming down to these commercial districts and make it more enjoyable experience to want to come and shop in your uh, local commercial district. Absolutely. Like Lucas said, this is a perfect example of the incremental project that you can do with volunteers and a couple hundred bucks of paint while you're building up to that larger multi-million dollar project that's going to fix the infrastructure in the district. Mm -hmm. So Redfall Cafe is sort of a landmark in the Borellis District of Albuquerque. And one of the projects we worked on there in the last year was they received a $7,000 grant through the New Mexico Gas Company grants that were targeted toward Main Street communities. And the focus of this was to help physically improve both the Redfall Cafe's property, but, but the streetscape around it as well. So again, this was done with New Mexico Main Street Technical Assistance, our landscape architect, went in and worked with the community in the program to develop the plans for this. And then they had a work day where they went out and volunteers painted all those squares that you see on the sidewalk there and really just kind of came together to support the business and physically improve the space. So originally this, this business had actually closed down. Um, the, the original owners uh, were uh, retiring and just couldn't uh, operate the store anymore. And so lo the local program actually worked with some family members, um, uh, I believe a cousin, uh, who decided they wanted to open up a restaurant. And ever since the, it took, this was years in the making, um, where the local Main Street program kept checking in on the family and, and seeing where they were in the stages of the process and worked with them to identify things so they can really bring some life, new life back into this property and also this business. Silver City is a wonderful art community with a ton of artists and lots of art happening there. And they have this big ditch, which I, if you haven't been there, if you're not familiar, the big ditch was once their actual historic main street and it was washed out and eventually became what is now the big ditch and, and is a park. 
Um, but they have all of these sub streets that intersect with the big ditch. They're basically kind of little side streets that go to nowhere. So they wanted to make them into spaces that could be used for events and could showcase art. And so in the bottom left corner here, you can see the plans that were developed for it. And again, this was through New Mexico Main Street Technical Assistance. And on the right-hand side, you can see one of the elements of that project where they had volunteers come out and painted this really amazing crosswalk. Um, they also did a really cool selfie spot. And it's sort of an ongoing project, and it does connect up to the big ditch, which they see as being an asset in their district that they want to leverage as well. Um, and then they're also in the process of developing a Main Street Plaza, which did receive capital outlay funding through New Mexico Main Street as well, which will serve as a farmer's market venue and an event space um, because they don't actually have a courthouse square or a plaza currently. And these sub streets um, or the strands, as they're now called, will help connect up to that space. Um, I was lucky enough to be at the ribbon cutting for this park in Lovington, and it was just really wonderful to see all the families and kids out there participating in the space. Um, this library is located uh, one block over from the courthouse square where the Lee Theater and many of their businesses, commercial businesses, and obviously some other municipal properties are all located around there. And they wanted to create a way to connect the library to that more commercial area. So this parklet was one of those. Again, New Mexico Main Street helped develop the rendering that you see in the bottom left-hand corner. And I have to say the actual results are even more stunning than the renderings are. I mean, the mural is amazing. They did receive a New Mexico Resiliency Alliance grant. Again, the Resiliency Alliance is one of our partners. They did receive funding from the Maddox Foundation, and then the City of Lovington did a ton of in-kind support for this project as well. So this now connects up to another parklet, which connects to the courthouse square. Uh, facade squads are a great example, again, of a smaller incremental project that can make a huge impact. You can do it with a few buckets of paint and volunteers, and you can do it over a weekend, maybe two weekends. Again, our colleague, uh, who is an architect, developed these renderings um, of what these buildings could look like, went down there, helped facilitate this facade squad. Both properties were largely vacant prior to being improved and after completion had businesses move in. So sometimes just physically improving the exterior with some paint can make a huge difference and encourage people, make people feel more confident in locating a business in your district. Another example of a facade squad, this was just a few months ago in Las Cruces. Um, you can see on the left-hand side, this building looked very different prior to the facade squad going in. Again, they did receive a $5,000 grant from the New Mexico Gas Company. Our colleague developed the renderings and helped helped them implement this, this facade squad, and it's done amazing. I mean, it looks incredible. Hotel Clovis is, um, this you know project is a few years old now, but it really is one of the major redevelopment success stories in our downtown Main Street district in this state. It was on the national and state register. It sat there vacant for 30 years for due to remediation issues. The city acquired it in 2003, and they, as a result, they were able to apply for New Mexico Main Street capital outlay grant, so they were able to remediate it. Um, New Mexico Main Street also provided support and assistance through this process by um, doing an assessment of the building and exploring what the possibilities were for what could go in there and how that could happen. They, Because they do have a metropolitan redevelopment area, they were able to establish a public-private partnership with the developer. So today it is a mixed-use space. It has housing, event facilities, and commercial space. It's LEED Platinum certified. It still is on the National Register. As a result of this project, the same developer um, created two additional housing projects right in the vicinity. And as a result, people who are living in this building downtown are shopping in the other downtown businesses, whereas before there was no residential in the downtown, and now they have 31 units, as well as the other two properties, the 29 and 60 units, which are both in the vicinity as well. 
So Luna Theater is one of the first theaters that New Mexico Main Street worked on in collaboration with a local Main Street program and municipality. Um, as many of you know, especially if you're from a small community, these smaller local theaters were, many of them were forced to close due to, due to the cost associated with digital conversion. So the town of Clayton decided to purchase this theater and applied for Lita Capital Outlay as well as New Mexico Main Street Capital Outlay to fund the improvements and the digital conversion to this theater. And as a result of the theater reopening, we saw the historic Hotel Eklund across the street was purchased and reopened, and we've seen other businesses open as a result as well. The Trinity Hotel in Carlsbad, which is actually my hometown, um, this building was built in 1892. It was visibly decaying and was on the verge of becoming a parking lot. Um, and I know that the local Main Street program requested assistance from New Mexico Main Street as far as developing a potential redevelopment plan for it. Um, and then it was later purchased by three partners, rehabilitated and reopened as a boutique hotel and fine dining restaurant. It is still there, it is still going strong, and I, it really created something very new for the community and for the downtown district. After the Trinity opened, two other fine dining restaurants opened all just within a few blocks of the Trinity. Um, and we've seen other development happen as well as a result of that. It's really been an amazing project for that community. Drylands Brewing in Lovington is a project that is near and dear to all of our hearts. Um, this it was on the side of a gas station that burned down in the 70s. As you can see on the bottom there, it was just a vacant lot for many, many, many years, decades. The city ultimately inherited the property and tried to sell it four times. Uh, again, thanks to having a metropolitan redevelopment area, they were able to sell it for $100 to the entrepreneurs that wanted to start this brewery. They actually applied for a New Mexico Resiliency Alliance, and when you receive a Resiliency Alliance grant, that means you also get technical assistance from New Mexico Main Street. So we, um, our, our entrepreneur development specialist, helped work with them to develop a business plan for the brewery to research it um, and figure out how they were going to make this happen. They were able to get state and local LIDA funds, and they opened the brewery in 2017. It's been incredibly successful. It's successful. It's been a huge draw to the Lovington downtown district, and the owners are actually now in the process of opening a second location in Hobbs. And then our last quick little project here is from Cuesta, which is one of our frontier communities. As you can see, there was just a vacant lot with overgrown weeds, and through a community input process, our urban planning um, landscape architect worked with them to sort of develop this great little community space that if you can see in the bottom left hand corner there is directional signage directing people um, and then they also held I, I believe a holiday fiesta there after this was completed so it, it went from being this very derelict spot to becoming sort of a space that the community could use to gather and and really helped beautify that that little corner there as you enter into the district. Well, thank you everybody for uh, attending this webinar. Uh, again, we really want to encourage you to come and check out our uh, Winter Quarterly if you really are really interested in, in working with us and, and working with your local Main Street. Um, and now at this point, we want to open up for questions and we know we're short on time here, so please make sure, feel free to contact myself or Amy or uh, uh, Daniel Gutierrez, the director, uh, with any questions to follow up on this. Thanks, Lucas. Thanks, Amy. Um, we are going to, I wanted to share really quickly before we get to questions. This way you guys can um, type your questions in. Um, I wanted to give a little bit, oh my gosh, what's happening? Oh, here we go. Um, my name's Joanna, and I wanted to just highlight a few of the business resources that we have. Um, Lucas and Amy did a fantastic job explaining Main Street and what an incredible value and, and um, resource they are to communities. And wanna, don't want to miss the opportunity to just make sure that you in your community are aware of the finance 
uh, the business finance tools that we have. Um, this way, type your questions while I'm talking. Uh, I'm going to go through these really quickly, but we have the business finance finder. This is a, a tool that's relatively new. The idea is that a business that is seeking funding can go online, do a quick summary of what they're looking for. This could be a Main Street business. I need $50,000 for a new cooler. Um, type in the summary, then we send that summary out to a list of lenders that are trying to find deals and projects. We send that out to the list and then they follow up with the business. So that's, that's a, a neat tool. And then we also have been hosting finance fairs throughout the state. Um, we'll be, we just had one in Albuquerque. We'll be going um, south um, pretty soon. So stay tuned for those. That's when we invite all of the local lenders to one spot and um, invite businesses there to shop around their deals. Um, collateral assistance program, this is, if you have a business in your, your Main Street area um, or not in your Main Street area, any business in your community that wants to get a business loan and they need collateral, we can help with the collateral gap. So that means a bank might be requiring, you know, on that $50,000 uh, cooler that a business needs, maybe the business only has um, you know, $25,000 in collateral, or that's how much the bank is willing to recognize. So we'll come in, purchase a CD for $25,000 that sits in the bank and it acts as extra collateral. This is open for nonprofits too, so might be a good fit for Main Street. Then Fund It, hopefully you all know about Fund It. This is a really great platform that operates kind of like Main Street in the way of connecting projects and communities to funding sources. So how it works is a community um, presents their project. It's going to be revitalization. We see a lot of Main Street projects come through. Um, and then at that meeting, when the community is presenting their project, you have all of the funders in one place at one time. You're getting feedback. You're getting great brainstorms. Um, and great ideas about how to fund your project. So, um, funded resources, you, we, we also have a map online that you can go and navigate. Um, Main Street projects are perfect examples of um, needing different types of funding sources for different types of components. This is available, you can kind of click through. I've got a community development project. I'm a rural community and it'll populate the, the funds that are available to you. And let's see, so let's take questions. I see some are coming through. Um, and I wanna say Lucas and Amy did a fantastic job. So let's see, one of the questions is, um, of course, uh, will this um, webinar be available? So I just wanna remind everybody, we'll be sending this out. Presentation, you can access the recording online. Um, Someone, Christina said, thank you, Lucas and Amy. And can someone, Victoria said, can you provide a link to the YouTube? Um, so not a lot of questions come in. I think you guys did a really fantastic job at hitting all of the key points. Do you have anything that you want to add? No, I, I think um, I'm, I'm happy we did so well that we, uh, <laughs> we didn't have any questions, but hopefully well, I, I think well, everybody. We, we, we spoke too soon. Henry had All one right. that came in. Um, he's okay. asking, what resources for market research do you offer? That comes through our technical assistance. Uh, we have um, a, a business uh, specialist who can help with somebody with a, a business who needs to do some market research and understand the demographics of an area and what kinds of products are being sold and really where people have to go out of market to go and get those things, where the gaps are. Um, we also have somebody who does work in real estate development, too. So we have two folks who can really kind of uh, get into two different realms, one in, in terms of a, a, a district and where the demand is for, for spending, and then one that who, who can really help you understand what the real estate market is like. Great. And that's kind of, to me, that hits on the squad that you guys mentioned. I know the squad you're talking about was in reference to the facade squad. But when I think Main Street, I think of an army of resources and just extremely um, experienced and full of wisdom and knowledge. They have an entire army that, that can help with, with business resources, community development, planning, everything. 
And that's kind of where our, our, we fit in together, right, within the department, because um, the department works with Bieber through UNM, who does a fantastic job of compiling market research, as well as UNM's Small Business Institute. So we're always talking, always figuring out resources to pass on. Um, we're going to take two more questions. One came in from Bill. Hey, Bill. Um, will there be monies available for historical theaters? That was a really popular program. So is that still going on? Um, it, it, was a, it was a popular program. Um, I would say that that was several years ago. And so there have not been monies allocated toward that program since then. Um, however, I would say that that doesn't mean that we could not provide support and technical assistance and try to find ways for that community to identify funding for the theater, but it probably just wouldn't come down the same pipeline it came down before. Right, yeah, so we, we can we can work on multiple different kinds of, uh, of projects that, you know, from hotels to theaters to, to other kind of real estate development projects. and. Uh, so it, it, even though that project may not have been funded or that program may have been funded recently, we still may be able to help and, and identify other w ways to, to support the project. Great. Um, last question we're going to take this. Oh, no, another. Oh, two more came in. Um, I'm going to ask. Let's see if we can get through these really quickly. Um, so one person is asking basically how can they how can they get on the squad um they're saying that they are a real estate professional and it sounds like how how could they be included as um, a resource basically for the projects well every year we 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 open up uh, rfps for contractors that we work with and that get deployed so uh, I would say that you, we would look out for an RFP by the end of the fiscal year, um, and then we'll, we take applications that way. Yeah, if they're if they're meaning that they want to be a technical assistance provider mm -hmm. through the New Mexico Main Street program, mm -hmm. then like Lucas said, that would be the way to get involved. If they're in a community that already has a Main Street program and mm -hmm. they just want to engage in the Main Street work, then I would suggest they contact that local Main Street community. Mm -hmm. um, the, lo the local nonprofit that's running that problem, excuse mm. me, program, mm. and see if there's an opportunity to volunteer and engage there. Right. And if they don't have a Main Street program and they're interested in one, then they should definitely contact mm. Lucas or myself and we can talk them through how they might begin exploring that process. Right, yeah. The, the local Main Streets themselves sometimes will we, we'll contract with folks uh, independently or reach out to other professionals um, in their district, especially in terms of real estate. Uh, sometimes it's, it's really helpful. So. I would, if you're whatever area you're working in, try to reach out to a director and see if you could connect because it, it could be helpful for the local Main Street program to understand their real estate market and uh, see how they can work with together. Great. And we did get two questions, one from um, Liz in Santa Fe. Hey, Liz, and Sherry. Sherry said she's looking for info on arts and cultural district and then um, Liz was kind of talking about, could you, specifically, she works for the city of Santa Fe. Um, can you offer a little bit of insight into how folks can follow up with you that have questions about cultural, arts and cultural districts? And, you know, if they're wanting to explore with you guys designations, how, how would they go about that? Uh, I would say send send me an email uh, or give me a phone call and and we can talk. Um, there's there's uh, you know there's, there's that could probably be a lengthy discussion, so it's probably worth a phone call. Um, but you could also in the meantime go and check out our website and um uh, mainstreet uh, dot org and and see what we have there in terms of arts and cultural districts. Um, so I, I would say that's the best way probably to to, to proceed with them. Yeah, the Arts and Cultural District program is not an annual application uh, process. It's really sort of dependent on funding and mm -hmm. and because it does take quite a bit of manpower to launch a new program. So it is best to pick up the phone and call Lucas or Daniel and just have a conversation exploring like what the possibilities are in the future. Great. And I, I do have one, let's see. 
this is the last question. I keep saying that, but some great questions are coming in. Um, so let's see, is there state funding? This seems pretty straightforward. Um, is there state funding available this year for ACDs? And is that, I assume that's art that's, and cultural that's, district? Yeah, that, that's the same, essentially sort of the same answer. You know, we're in the legislative okay. session now. So until we get to the other side of the legislative session, we won't know whether there is the opportunity to open up applications for new arts and cultural districts. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, if people are interested in that, it's always best to reach out to Lucas and Daniel because then it's on their radar and they know that's something that people are interested in. Um, so then they can explore how do we, how can we try to make that happen in the near future? Right. And the next steps would kind of be dependent on where the individual or organization is at at the moment. So it's good to get a sense of those things before um, anything happens. We can start, but uh, we can certainly start brainstorming steps. Um, but a lot of this depends on what we get in terms of the allocation from the state at, you know, during this legislative session. And contact your representatives, right? And tell them that you support Main Street. Oh, yeah. That's always a sure. good, yeah. good thing to do. Um, okay, well, we're going to close the questions. Um, and we will be sending out this webinar. It has Lucas information, Amy's information. I think it, it you know, you can contact Daniel and, and the whole um, army behind Main Street. They'll get you in touch with the right person. Did want to highlight some upcoming events with the department. Fund it meeting is coming up March 31st. We'll be meeting in Santa Fe. And I think we've, we've got some representatives from the federal transportation um, department, DOT, talking about their Build America program. So we're going to be focusing on transportation. Um, those meetings are open to the public. Again, that'll be in Santa Fe. You can apply at that link. Um, the next finance or the next webinar series that we're doing this is tentative, but we've been talking about this for a while, um, doing a webinar on how to finance food systems. This is in relation to the governor's effort uh, to end hunger. And this is the, the idea of how do you fund projects like food depots and address issues like food deserts. These are issues that Main Street communities are tackling all the time. So we're, we're hopeful that that'll happen in February. If not February, it'll be happening soon. So stay tuned for that. Uh, if you are in an opportunity zone, uh, this we're going to be having a marketplace slash forum coming up in May. Um, as mentioned, the collateral assistance program, we're actively enrolling projects, business finance fairs. Stay tuned for that. You can sign up at all these links and, and get um, notices. Um, legislative session is going on. As mentioned, contact your representatives and let you know, let them know you you love Main Street and how important they are in your community. We, I don't think anyone mentioned this, but um, in fact, we got a question that alluded to an outdoor rec bu uh, business in their community. But outdoor recreation division is newly formed within our department. This is a, a department that is focused solely on the outdoor rec industry. So that incorporates businesses. Um, community projects. This is in direct correlation with Main Street efforts. So reach out to us, um, get connected with that. We've got some exciting news coming out about that um, division, some, some good tools. So stay in touch. Um, and then here's a link. You can go to our regional rep page. These are our representatives all over the state that can connect you to the department. Um, here's the link to Main Street. Here's some other additional links if you want to talk more about um, financing. So again, um, thank you so much, Lucas and Amy. Want to reiterate how important Main Street is to New Mexico and highlight the incredible work that they do. Um, and the Main Street communities are, are completely transformed and vibrant and exciting. And I, I love going to y'all's meetings and, and seeing all the energy around building assets, building up communities. So thank you all for what you do. And, and the folks that are participating and listening in, contact them. They are incredible. And they're so helpful and friendly. Love that about Main Street, too. Um, so thank you. Follow up. Um, we'll be sending this, this information out hopefully today. All right, thanks, Lucas and Amy. All right, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.